Hello there everyone. Today I'm going to show you how to make this beaded Kamohima bracelet. And what you have is little hedgehogs or porcupines, whatever you want it to be, going all the way around, looking like this. So, and the inside of your bracelet, you can have the underbellies, so it's also nice and comfortable to wear. And then you have your hedgehogs or porcupines up here, depending what you want it to be. So if you want to learn how to make this, then keep watching. So these are the things that we'll need to make the bracelet. Now first off here I have my Kumihima disc and it's the round one because we're making a round braid. And then the cord that I'm using is a 0.4mm Eslon here. It's going to be a nice and strong cord and I'm just working with the black colour because I thought that would be a nice background colour for the beads that I'm using. And then as for the beads, I'm actually using a few different shapes here to be able to create the porcupines. And the first two here are just regular round 6 or seed beads also known as a 4mm size. So what I have here is a green colour. This specific one is an opaque green AB. That's going to be the grass. And then this one is just an opaque black. And that's going to be the underside of the porcupine. And then for the actual porcupine, what I have here is long megatema beads. And these specific ones are a matte dark topaz colour. And then the final beads that I have up here, these are going to work as the head of the porcupine. And what these are, these are Cheops beads. So these are triangle beads, but they have two holes going through them. And this specific colour is a matte metallic gold iris. And then finally, up here I have my findings. So I have my Kumihima ends that are 5mm ones. They're going to fit perfectly with this cord. I have my Lofter Claw clasp, jump rings and extender chain. What I'm also going to do is put all the details for all these materials that we need for this specific bracelet down in the description box below. So you can have a look there for a bit more detailed description. So let's get it all together and let's get started. So then what we need to do is cut a cord and what I have here is four lengths of about one meter each. And then what I'm going to do is put all the ends together like this down here and then up here where I have my finger, that's roughly the middle. So what I'm going to do is untie a knot around all the cords to kind of keep them in place and keep them together. But also I'm going to use this, I know where the middle point is now, to then attach to my Kumihima board. So this is then the way you want to set up your cords and your disc here. So put your knot down through the middle, and you can always attach either a little piece of wire or a Kumihima weight or something like that. And then distribute your cords around your dot, so don't worry about the numbers, just one on each side of every dot around the disc. And then to start making the braid, the way I usually work is I start with my top left one, so I'm going to grab that, release it from the board, bring it up and down, over the middle here and down, stay on the same side. Now I'll take the bottom right one, bring it up and stay on the right side of that top pair, turn your disc, Grab the top left one, bring it down, and then your bottom right one, and bring it up, and then just keep going like this. So what we need now first is a little section of this braid here to begin with, before we start adding in the beads, just of about a centimetre or two, it's just going to help us finish it off at the end. So I now have this little section of just the braid, so now what we need to do is start adding in our beads. So I've now added my first set of beads here onto my lengths of cord. Now what you'll find with this braid is that it's a little bit different than your regular bead Kumahima braid. Because normally we'll just fill up all the strands with all the beads that we need for the whole piece that we're making. But in this case we're not going to be doing that. We're going to have to work in sections. And that is because of this very specific bead. Because this bead has got two holes in it and we need to use both of them for different strands. So that's why we can only add the beads in sections at a time up until we reach that point. So like I said, this is the first section of beads. So this is how I'm going to start out the bracelet. And my next pair that I'm going to be starting with is the top left one and then take that down and then take the bottom right one and bring that up. That's how I work with my braids. And therefore, if you work the same way as me, so if you start with either the top left one or the bottom right one, you're going to set up all the beads throughout as I'm going to show you in the exact same way that I do here. Now if you start with the top right one or the bottom left one, what you'll need to do is swap over where you put your beads basically. So that means if you kind of imagine you have a mirror in front of your disc, you need to put them all on in the mirror image. So, because my next one that I'm going to start with now is my top left one, so that means if you start with your top right one, 
these two cords need to switch place. The bottom two needs to swap over with each other. On the side here, the top ones on the side need to swap over across the disc and the bottom ones also need to swap over across the disc and stay below that dot. So that's what you need to do if you work the opposite way than me. So just bear that in mind, that if you work the opposite way than me, so you start with your top right one or your bottom left one, you'll need to put on your beads in the opposite way like I just explained throughout the whole bracelet. So just keep that in mind when we're adding each section. But then otherwise, I'm just going to go through with you now how I put on my beads. And what I'm also going to do is take some pictures here of each section. So this one I'm doing now and in the next section as well, the rest of the bracelet will be the exact same, just repeat it. I'm going to take some pictures of this, put it on my website for some instructions as well, so you can have it in picture form, that might make it a little bit easier. And I'm going to put a link to that down in the description box below. But then to start out with, I'm going to look at the top ones first. So, like I said, this is just the first section, so we only have a few beads on them now. I start out with two of my green beads, then two of my magatemas, one black, and then one green. And all the magatemas and all the lengths here are all facing the same way, so you just got to bear that in mind as well because the way the beads are made, they kind of end up either pointing one way or another way. So when you add them on, just always remember that they always, the point of the beads basically need to point downwards on all the strands on the same direction. But then the next length over here, so to the right side of my dot, I have two green, two magatamas, and then one green. And then looking on the opposite pair down here, the first ones are to the right side of my dot on the bottom there, I have three green and then two of my magatamas right down here. And then the other one that's to the left side of that dot, I've got two green and two black and then one green at the end. And on this section, this one that I've just gone through is the only one that doesn't have any other magatama beads on it. Now out to the left side here, the one above the dot, what I have is one green, three magatamas and then one green. And then the one below the dot, I have two green one magatama and then two black. And then on the other side of the disc here, I have the last two cards left. The one on top of the dot there, I have two green and then three of my magatamas. And the final one below the dot, I have two green, one black, one magatama. And this very final bead is the one that's the key up bead. So that's the one with two holes in it in the triangle shape. The one that I said was going to be the head of the porcupine and also because of this bead, because it's got two holes and we're using both of them, this is why we've got to do it in sections because we need to use one of the other cords to go through that as well after we added it into the braid. And obviously we won't be able to do that if we have all the lengths of cord completely filled up with our beads on. But now that we have all these beads in place to basically make the very first porcupine on the braid, what we need to do is start adding them into the braid. So I'm then going to pick up my disc here and then keep hold of it and then this is also the point where if you want to you can add a weight to the back so using a kumihima weight like that if you feel the need that might help with a bit of the tension as well so it'll help pull your braid down through the center there. But then to start incorporating the beads into the braid like I said I'm going to start with my top left one as the next one I'm going to grab that and then as I release the cord from the disc I need to release one bead as well, so the very first bead you run into, let that drop down, like that, and drop all the way down to the middle there. And then what you need to do is tuck that in underneath the cord that's crossing over to make sure it stays in place there, and then place it back on the bottom. Take my bottom right one, release one bead, let it drop all the way down as you're releasing the cord and then let that bead fall into the middle and if it doesn't fall underneath by itself make sure you tuck it in because you need to make sure in the middle there the beads go underneath all the cords because that's how they end up on the outside of your braid along the way. Turn your disc, repeat the same step, take my top left one, release one bead as I'm releasing the cord like that, let the bead drop down into the center there, tuck it in and place the cord back on the bottom and then my bottom right one and repeat the same thing. And you just want to keep doing this until you now have no more bead in this section and more beads left here and we basically created the first porcupine. Now I also have a tutorial that shows how to do basic bead at Kumihima in more detail 
so they might be helpful. I'm going to put a link to that in the description box below, so you can go and have a look at that. But otherwise keep doing this until you used up the few beads that we've now already put onto the strands. So I've now kept adding my beads here until I have just a few left. So the very next one is the triangle bead there, so the Kiehl's bead. I'm going to let that down, just like the rest, the exact same way. Let it drop down and make sure it tugs in underneath. And then just bring that over. And then I'm going to turn my disc. And then this next length here, I don't have a bead on because this is the cord that we also need to go through that bead. So what I'm going to do is, you'll probably just need to turn your disc around or something like that. We can just free up a little bit of space, so just loosen up your cords a little bit. And then I'm going to grab that very next cord that I'm due to take. So that's the top left one here. And I'm actually going to just bring that down through the center of the disc. Just so I can work with it from the back, it's a little bit easier. Like this. So now on the back here, what I have is my triangle bead. And you can see it's not sitting quite correctly because it's got two holes. But I'm only using one of them at the moment. So what I need to do is get the end of this card that I just put down through the disc. And get that through the other hole on this bead. So from the bottom there. So just maneuver it a little bit here until it then comes back out of the top. And then you can pull it all the way through, make sure you don't get caught on anything. And don't get caught on any of the other beads if you can help it. Now what you'll find when you're doing this, the top of your braid here probably goes a bit loose. But just keep it as nice as you can. Just like that. So it's pulled through now, so now I need to get it back up to where I took it from. So make sure you go through the same space here. I know I went through this corner. You don't want to then go on one of the other sides here, because then you'll kind of mix up the cords. So go back up through the disc again. We just went through the hole just to be able to get through the bead a bit easier. Back up to the other side, where you took it from. And then place it back in the disc to begin with. In that slot where you took it from. You can recognize that from the pair where you've only got the one cord, so you want to put it back in there. And then you just want to have a look, see if anything has gotten loose. I can see one of my beads here has gotten a bit loose. So I just want to put that back in place and tighten up my length of cord all over. So now I'm ready to continue the braid with this cord that I just put through the second hole of that bead. And now there is no bead on this one because that's the one we just put through there. So all I'm going to do is just make sure that that triangle bead stays below the cord and bring that back over. So now I've only got one bead left to finish off this pair that I'm doing now. So let that green one drop all the way down into the center there, tuck it underneath and then bring the cord over. So now we've done all these beads in this section adding in that triangle bead. So from the back it's going to look something like this. So you can see that little triangle is the head of the porcupine. So now that we've done this, this first section here, we now need to add on some more beads to be able to create the next porcupine. So I've now finished off that first section of braid, so we've got our very first hedgehog, and then now what I've done is got my next section ready on all my lengths of cord. So again, the next cord that I'm due to take is my top left one here, because I work top left and then bottom right. So what I'm going to do again is just go through all the cords and just tell you how I put on the beads. So on my top left one up here, I have two green, then two of my magatemas, and then one green. And remember again, all the magatemas, the point when you thread them on, need to all be pointing downwards towards the disc. So then on the right card on top here, I have two green and then two magatemas. And then we'll go down to the bottom again. On the right bottom one down here, this is the one now where I don't have any magatemas on, it's the only one. I have two green, two black, and then one green. And then on the other one down here, I have one green, two magatemas, one black, and then one green. So now to the left side of the disc, the top one of the two here, I have one green and then three magatemas. And then the bottom one of the two, I have one green, three magatemas, and then one green. So then on the opposite side of the disc here, so the right side, the bottom one of the two, I have one green, one magatema, and then two black. The top one, I have two green, one black, and one magatama, 
and then this is the one where I finish off with one of my key ops beads, so that triangle bead. And what I also just want to mention regarding that triangle bead that I forgot to mention before, it's the same thing throughout. You just got to make sure you thread that on the right way. Now it has the two holes. It doesn't matter what hole you use the first time around here. But what does matter is you need to thread it on going from the bottom. So one side of the triangle has two holes through it and the other sides have one each. So you just need to go through from the bottom where it's got two holes through. So this is now the beads for that next section for the next porcupine in the braid. So what you need to do is pick up your disc again, start adding in all these beads until you use them all. And then basically what you need to do is then repeat this section over and over again until you reach the length that you want your piece to be. So for instance for a bracelet you want so many porcupines. So I'm just going to repeat this section over and over again adding them one at a time because of that one bead with two holes in it. So I've now continued adding my beads onto my braid in the sections like I've showed you until I've reached almost the length that I want my bracelet to be. So then once we've reached that point, we just need to finish off the very last end here of a beaded section with some more beads. So what I've done is just added another two green beads to each of my lengths of cord. And then all we need to do is pick up our bead here, our board with our beads on, and then just continue after the very last section you just did. I have two green on each of my cords and just continue adding your beads until you used all these up then this will be the very end of your beaded section to basically look like the beginning where we just have a bit of green so you just want to do this until you run out of beads and then when you don't have any more beads to add what we need to do is just continue with a bit of braid just with a cord alone here just to have a little section at the end to finish off the bracelet so just do this and then naturally your cords will singe in here and look just like the pattern at the beginning. So I'm now done with my braiding here so we can take this off the disc and then what I like to do to make sure it's not going to unravel when we take it off is just start with the pair that I didn't do last, this one that I did last. So I'm going to start with the opposite pair. Just take two cords here diagonally opposite each other, bring them over the middle and tie a regular knot and tighten it down right at the end of your braid there. Take the other cords, do the same thing. And this is really just mostly to secure the end so your cord doesn't come undone here but also we get a nice and neat finish without adding too much bulk by adding a full on knot using all the cords in one go. Last one. Like that and then we've done that. We can take it completely off the disc now. It's not going to come undone. And then we're done with the main part of our braid here. And you have all your little hedgehogs or porcupines running up the bracelet. So this is then what it looks like on the front. And on the back side, you have the little underbellies there. And also by using these beads instead of the magatamas on the back, it's going to be more comfortable against your skin to wear. So this is what it looks like, then all there's left to do is finish off the ends of your braid with your Kamehameha ends. I already have a tutorial that shows how to do that, so I'm going to put a link to that in the description box below, so you can have a look at that if you need to. So I've now finished off both my ends here, and attached my clasp and my extender chain, and then basically your bracelet is now done. So I can use this, wrap it around, fasten it, and then you have the underside with your hedgehogs or porcupines on the inside like I said so it'll be nice and comfortable to wear and then they're on the outside sitting like this kind of running around your wrist so this is how you make this bracelet so I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial and thank you very much for watching hello there everyone today I want to show you how to make this cherry blossom beaded kumahima bracelet and it looks like this so you get your cherry blossoms going all the way around with your little leaves on them. Different leaves on each one. And then the flowers on the outside of the bracelet here. So it'll look like this when you're wearing it. So if you want to learn how to make this, then keep watching. So here are the things that we'll need. Now because we're making a round braid, we'll need a round kumahima disc for this. 